Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic, and we're going to talk about personal size inserts and how versatile they are. The standard size for a personal size insert is 3.75 inches by 6.75 inches. That is your finished size, your closed um, insert size, your individual insert size. For traveler's notebook purposes, the open size or the spread size is seven and a half inches wide by six and three quarter inches tall so but this is one of the size inserts that is standard for traveler's notebook and six ring binders so if you have inserts with the proper margins they can work in both style binding system personal size is one of two that can work in multiple binding systems the other one is a5 and i've already done a video on that which i will link here a5 inserts work for traveler's notebook for binders and they also can work for this system so i'm going to show you a few different styles of binders and traveler's notebooks this is was a gift from Jessica, one of my subscribers here on YouTube. Hi Jess. Um, this is a personal size. It's a rather slim personal size. And you can, as you can see, there are inserts that are already in here. This is what the inserts look like. And this is just an example of one of my inserts with the tip in. So there's that. So again, this is like a, a very s narrow version of a, a personal size traveler's notebook. Then we have the Mystic's Little Gift. This is whiskey leather and it has light pink stitching and band. I'm not sure that she has the whiskey line anymore. I think it's bourbon now. But this is, again, just an example of a traveler's notebook this is an insert that's available in my shop and I'll show you this same insert exactly is also this same exact insert is also used in my binder here so I just cut it down the center and punch the holes and it fits perfectly same exact insert so in this binder and this binder is the Webster's Pages. It's kind of dirty. <laughs> uh, it's the Webster's Pages. Personal size. And I think this might have been one of the Color Crush line. I'm not sure. But that is just one example of how you can use um, inserts for personal size in two different binding systems. So here is another personal size. I don't have any of my inserts in this. This is a Filofax original. Oh, I haven't used this one at all, really. This was my unicorn. This was when I first started planning. This was the one that I wanted the most. And it is a beautiful planner. And I just think that the Filofax leathers are probably the best. I love the feel of this planner and because I like it so much that's probably why I haven't used it yet but so and then last but not least this is the recollections version of personal size planner it is a little wider than the um, standard personal size their inserts are a quarter inch wider than the standard personal size but you can still use a standard personal size insert in here it's just a slight difference so and there's that so I'm going to put these all together so that you can kind of get a look at the size differences so basically let's start with this one the one that Jess sent me is slightly smaller than the one from Mystic's Little Gifts. It's shorter and narrower than 
the one from Mystic's Little Gifts is a little more narrow than the Filofax, but they are the same height. Then you take the follow. Is it Filofax or Filofax? Then you take it next to the Webster's pages, and it actually they're about the same width. The Webster's pages is a little taller, so I would say the Filofax is a little more compact than other um, personal size binders and then to compare the Webster's pages with the recollections version the recollections is approximately the same height it's just a little wider so they're all in the same range of size it's just slight differences I would say that on either the top or bottom there's more no more than one half inch difference between any of them so for today I'm going to be working with my mystics little gifts and my Webster's pages and I'll put these out of the way I've already printed two sets of inserts they are exactly the same they are a dated insert for October through December this specific style is not available on my website right now. This was kind of a test style that I was working on. If you are interested in this, just leave me a comment in below and I may add these to the shop. I don't I don't know since October has already started. I don't know how if I would do that. But if you really like the style of the insert, let me know and We'll see what we can do so to begin I am going to cut the ones for the binder first let's move these over so this is my paper trimmer that I use for cutting inserts it's a rotary trimmer and when I'm doing binder inserts I usually cut the center first and that is five and a half inches or you can just use your the cut marks that are printed when you print your inserts so I'm just going to make several passes to make sure that my paper is cut so now that I've cut it in half I'm just going to fold them together this way because that will make sure that my pages are in the correct order so now I'm going to put these together make sure everything is lined up you may not be able to do this with your paper trimmer depending on what pick what kind of trimmer you're using because I only use this for inserts I kind of don't have to worry about my blade too much so I'm just going to go ahead and cut off this top portion I'm going to go ahead and cut off the bottom Make sure everything is lined up. Maybe I'll stick a binder clip on here just to help keep it in lined up. Now I'm just going to cut this at three and three quarters inches wide. I'm going to have to remove. binder clip now you don't have to cut all of your papers at one time I just kind of do that here to save time I don't want you to ruin your paper trimmers so like I said I don't use this paper trimming trimmer for paper crafting or anything like that it's solely for cutting inserts okay so there we have it set this aside for now so here we have our inserts nicely trimmed I'm going to use my adjustable hole punch make sure that my punches are in the correct place which they are let's double check hold it compare it to the rings yes 
and because I folded and kept everything together and in order I'm just going to flip through just to make sure that my dates are flowing properly and they are so now I'm going to start punching and putting my inserts in the notebook so not too many pages at once this also has lines where you can line up your personal size punch and add your inserts to your notebook so I'm just going to go ahead and punch the rest of these and when you're punching these always make sure that you're punching on the right edge of the paper or should I say on the correct edge of the paper it's easy to get confused and punch the wrong margin so so there you have it this is the personal size for October these are dated inserts November and December then you have some note pages also okay so that is in the binder and ready to go ready to be used so set this one aside now we're going to cut we won't need the hole punch anymore now we're going to cut our inserts for the traveler's notebook on this one I did not print a cover but I'm just going to use a blank piece of white cardstock for my cover and I'm just going to put that on the outside and line it up as if it's part of my inserts this is a different method of cutting inserts that I have been toying around with. It works better for thinner inserts, but I'm going to give it a go here for these larger, this larger stack. So I'm going to go ahead and fold all of my inserts in half, all of my sheets. Make sure I keep them in order. You don't have to fold each individual page. I'm using a 32 pound paper, which is pretty heavy weight. And, and I want to get a nice clean fold. So folding individually is the best way to achieve that. If you're using a lightweight paper, you can fold more than one page at a time and get a nice crease. It just depends on how careful you are. But I like everything to be uniform and I want a nice crease. So I go through the trouble of doing each individual page. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do the cover. For the cover, you can go ahead and use your scoreboard. I think I will in this instance that helps get a cleaner fold and less crinkling of the paper so I'm going to put it on the scoreboard and score at five and a half inches which is the center of this eight and a half by eleven paper so I just put a quick score there and with the score you have a valley and you have a mountain or a hill from what I understand is you make the hill into a mountain. So when you fold it, it makes that part stick up. I hope I got that right. <laughs> okay, so then I'm just going to go ahead and burnish that fold. And it gives you a nice clean fold without... Sometimes when you fold cardstock, it'll crinkle and not have a nice clean edge. So... When you do it, when you do score, it gives you that clean edge. Okay. Now here's the thing. Because I'm using a plain cover that was not a cover that I printed, it does not have the cut marks on it already. So what I'll have to do is either hold this up to the light and mark my cut marks 
or put this cover on the inside of the first page so that I can still see my cut marks. That makes sense. So now I, I can see my cut marks and my cover can get cut along with everything else. And hopefully my paper trimmer can handle all of this. We shall see. This is a pretty thick booklet. So I'm just going to put this on my paper trimmer and line up my cut mark. She's pretty thick. Okay, let's try it. So that is not definitely not going to work. I'm going to have to turn it over <laughs> and hit the other side. Okay. So let's try it again on this side. Okay. Now you wouldn't have to flip it over on the other side if you're using a, a smaller um, insert, but because I'm using such a thick one and I have my cover in there, it's a little harder to cut. You could do this with um, a blade as well. I just don't like to use a blade, so I'm going about it the hard way. Now what you can do is cut your insert with, cut the top and bottom off first and then just do the side the way I just did it. But in an effort to save time, I just wanted to go ahead and get it done. So now I'm gonna take my cover out of the inside and put it on the outside and Make sure everything is lined up properly. Now, I've, I've done several videos showing you how to saddle stitch and insert, so I'm not going to go through that for this one so that I won't make the video too long. But I just want to show you, some people don't um, bind their inserts anyway. So let's see if I have an empty string. I don't, but we can take this one out for now. Yes. So this would just go in your traveler's notebook just like this and there you have an insert and it is exactly the same as the insert in the binder. Same size, same insert. So that's how you would do it. That is an example of, of how versatile personal inserts can be as well as printable if you get your own printable inserts and print them and cut them yourself you can pretty much use them how you want so that is it if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below if you haven't already visit my shop I have a shop on Etsy and at scrapcraftastic.com where I sell inserts similar to these for all different sizes of binders and travelers notebooks I also have some printable stickers available as well. Again, any questions, comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.